It's known as the four inch flight. And it's weird to say, but no launch failure was quite as comical as this one. Let's talk about Mercury Redstone 1. Hey guys, Tori here from Overlook Horizon. Welcome back to Two Minute Tuesday, which is where we cover a topic briefly for about two minutes, or as close as I can get to it, every Tuesday. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. So let's jump right into it and put two minutes on the clock and jump into today's Two Minute Tuesday. With the space race underway, the US was seeking to put the first human into space with Project Mercury. The project kicked off with a mixture of successful and failed test flights, but none were quite as crazy as Mercury Redstone 1. This flight attempt in November 1960 was the 10th uncrewed test flight conducted as part of the program. It was intended to qualify the Mercury spacecraft and its launch vehicle for suborbital missions. On launch day, following a normal countdown, the Mercury Redstone engine ignited. However, two of the electrical ground cables separated from the rocket in the wrong order, sending unexpected electrical currents through the systems. This caused the rocket to think that it was already done flying, so the engine immediately shut down after launching only 3.8 inches off the pad. But then the capsule escape tower jettisoned itself to an altitude of about 4,000 feet because it too thought its job was done. The capsule was now left attached to the fully fueled booster with no escape. Three seconds later, the capsule, which was completely confused as to what was happening, deployed its parachutes because the altimeter said that it was below 10,000 feet. Well, of course it was, it was still on the ground. <laughs> The only communication that Mission Control had at this point was through the range safety destruct charges. And ideally, they prefer not to destroy the rocket and the surrounding launch facilities, but what could they do? At any moment, the parachutes that were hanging off the side of the rocket could catch a gust of wind and tip the whole thing over. There were all sorts of crazy ideas flying around, including one which was to use a rifle and shoot holes in the side of the rocket to depressurize the fuel tanks. Luckily, that was rejected, and they ended up just waiting it out and letting the oxidizer boil off. To prevent this from ever happening again, they had to add a 12-inch grounding strap that would disconnect well after any of the other electrical connections disconnected from the rocket. Fortunately, the hardware was saved. The capsule was able to fly on the next test flight. The booster was repaired, but... It was never used again. All right, so that's this week's Two Minute Tuesday. If you have other burning space questions or events that you want me to cover, drop them in the comments down below. Don't forget to click that like button, consider subscribing, and I'll see you on the next video. Goodbye.